you might think that given the Kate, the state of the NHS, they'd be concentrating more on making sure more and more people were being treated rather than making sure that the people doing the treatment were not being somehow prejudiced. You would think so. In, in an ideal world, that's what they would do. But I'm afraid this is a continuation of a wider trend, which is the professionalization of wokery. Yes. Um, woke behaviors used to be something that people just did to show off a little, showing ah, I'm more progressive than, than you, I'm more enlightened than you. Um, but it's now become an industry, a place of a, a, a career that people can work in. Um, it's a continuation of creating more and more posts as diversity and inclusivity officers and so forth and implicit bias training courses and microaggression is just the latest uh, addition to that. And a microaggression, if I'm not mistaken, can be something which is not said, right? So it's not even just apparently asking somebody where they're from, which is apparently racist, um, but you can do something else which is unsaid, which is a microaggression, right? Oh, worse than that, it can be a compliment. <laughs> if you call someone who is not white articulate, for example, uh, even though that is a compliment, um, that would be considered a microaggression because the reasoning behind that is that it sounds as if you were surprised that that person is articulate. Right. It sounds as if you were assuming that they have to be inarticulate and therefore by saying otherwise, uh, you are committing an act of aggression. It's extraordinary, isn't it? And you really, I mean, this is when, when people say, but the NHS needs more money, this is when you say, well, hang on a minute, maybe it's that they don't spend the money they've got properly. Uh, I've got a, a tweet which I'm going to try and find um, in a moment from somebody who's actually waiting in a hospital to see his, uh, uh, his, his wife who's in there. And, you know, they're not allowed in. You're not allowed in for more than an hour. You have to wear a mask. You know, they've still got all these COVID restrictions going on. They're never going to get the backlog down in 100 years, never mind in, in the next five years. But you think, would you not, that they would put all of their resources into that instead of this rubbish? Yeah, I would love to see a study, uh, somebody, maybe somebody has done that, uh, just adding up how much the NHS spends on positions that are essentially just wokery, that, that are essentially just about um, pathologizing and policing the way people interact with each other. Uh, things that you could really just settle in an informal way and rather than employing people specifically for that purpose. Um, but you can... If you look at the NHS uh, jobs website, it's full of diversity, inclusivity positions, and usually on salaries of um, above £50,000. So, yeah, I would like to see how much they actually spend on this taken together. But we have to say, this isn't just the NHS. This is a broader trend um, and not even just limited to the public sector. It's happening in the private sector as well. Absolutely. And this woman who's quoted as saying that uh, being, being born in Britain is a country that legalised oppression, uh, uh, you can be happy to know, Christian, that you could go for an online course with her uh, in which uh, you'll be charged £1,074, including VAT. That's at the cheaper end, though. I've seen <laughs> courses on uh, toxic whiteness that had uh, where the enrolment fee was much higher than that. But, yeah, this is uh, it's become a way of showing off, showing your woke credentials mm. um, has become more and more competitive because when everybody is sort of woke, you have to it's, it's a form of one upmanship. You have to show uh, I'm a bit woker than the next guy. Yes. And one way to do that would be to say, well, I've spent more than a thousand pounds on this course. What have yes. you done? Uh, here's my woke certificate. I've got it here. I can show it to you. Exactly. you know. But this is yeah. it. I mean, people now say quite regularly, certainly in parts of London, and I was just talking to Rod Little, who lives in the northeast, but not in parts of the northeast, where they say, well, what's wrong with being woke? If you're not woke, there's obviously something actually wrong with you. Because being woke is all about wanting equality and fairness and that you must be a horrible, bigoted person because you don't like it. Well, okay, in that case, uh, I'm, I'm glad if woke people actually accept it as a label, as a self-description, uh, because for a while we saw this tendency of saying uh, woke is a meaningless term, it's just a, a meaningless slur, it's, it's something that culture warriors use to slack off anything they don't like, whereas I would say woke has a pretty clear definition. Um, woke activism is a wokery is the sort of worldview where you divide the population into assumed oppressor groups and assumed victim groups and you reduce everything to that and you place people on a hierarchy of uh, of oppression and victimhood uh, on you could say a points-based system almost uh, a hierarchy where of course white men would be at the very top the baddies to 
the, the apex predators and everybody else in society is to varying degrees oppressed. Yes, and it is absolutely and utterly ridiculous. Meanwhile, of course, I mean, you've looked at all sorts of different models for the NHS and its budgeting and how it works and how it works particularly vis-a-vis -vis other health systems in the world. And it is probably, I'd have to say now, one of the most inefficient organisations in the entire world, isn't it? Yes, it is one of the largest employers in the world, and uh, we're really not getting value for money for that. Um, there was uh, a report on this the other week by the Center for Policy Studies, where they uh, again looked at health outcomes compared Britain to a number of other developed countries and uh, showed the NHS is usually close to the bottom of the ranking on healthcare outcomes. And that's not a new finding. This overlaps very much with uh, things that I found myself when I wrote about this subject. Uh, this is a fairly consistent finding that we get worse outcomes than most other systems, even though spending is about average. Yes. If not more. And that's the, that's the point. And a lot of people are starting now at least to move away from the, the view that the NHS is this sacred cow that you can't criticise because so many people are having trouble accessing it. So many people are waiting for operations. So many people are being forced to go private because they simply can't get what they want out of, the, out of their own health service. Yes, we saw that. There was the, the British Social Attitudes Survey, uh, I think last month, where um, for the first time in, in ages, uh, we saw net dissatisfaction with the NHS. More people saying, I'm dissatisfied than people saying, I'm satisfied. And not surprisingly, because if you uh, can barely get in touch with the NHS, then uh, why would you say everything is brilliant? But nonetheless, um, I don't think it, it's losing its sacred cow status yet because what a lot of people do is then rationalize it uh, the, the same survey also asked them about the reason why do you think this is what do you think the problem is and most people still say well the nhs doesn't have enough money yeah. or it's being disrupted by government reforms so they're still saying the nhs as such is brilliant nothing wrong with it it's all just the, the amount of money that goes into it or the politicians meddling with it yes Christian, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Dr Christian Niemitz, the head of political economy at the IEA. There's no doubt the NHS isn't working, and it's not because of a lack of money. Uh, that's the view from anyone with a bit of common sense.